Hey everybody, this is Bronson Strickland with MSU Deer Lab. I'm here with Marcus Lashley as well, and we're out at one of our favorite study areas. This is the Andrews Forestry and Wildlife Outdoor Classroom or Outdoor Laboratory. And this is a place where we come to uh, demonstrate the stuff that we talk about, the stuff that we teach. We actually put it in action out here. And so uh, Marcus is gonna visit with us today on uh, a project he implemented about three years ago. And, and kind of one of the themes we wanna visit about Marcus is for most landowners in the Southeast, uh, they're dealing with smaller properties, smaller mm -hmm. acreage. So they don't have five, 10,000 acres to manage. Sure. They've got two to 300 acres mm -hmm. or smaller to manage. Right. And kind of our knee jerk for a lot of hunters is always uh, putting in a food plot, which is good and what we recommend. Mm -hmm. Some people maybe even supplemental feeding and things like that. What we wanted to talk about and demonstrate today is what type of habitat management can be done on that size of property yeah. and, and to draw and hold deer on the property. Right. So what you're looking at in the background here is what you might want to do on those small properties. So we're standing in a fire break right now and it's splitting a stand. We harvested the entire stand all at once, so thinned. So it was nearing its last thin when we planned this out. And notice how much sunlight is getting to the ground floor. So we thinned this stand originally down to about 40 basal area. So much lower than you would do in a standard timber operation. But again, we were targeting wildlife. So we came in, used broadcast herbicide, and then started using fire. And that's been over the last seven or eight years now. And you can see the vegetation behind Bronson is still only about waist high. That was burned two years ago. And we have this other stand behind me that's much taller. That was burned four years ago and is now due to be burned again. So we're getting all of that sunlight in the ground. Initially, we had herbicide to kill the mid-story, like what you're seeing over here behind you when we pan around. That was thin to a low basal area. Now all the sunlight is being captured seven or eight years later by the mid-story, which is out of the reach of deer. So it's still providing good cover, but the forage available in there is much lower. And you don't need cover that tall for deer to feel like they're in cover. So if when we're managing in a stand like this, we have two different sizes of the understory and midstory layer where we have behind me is starting to get a little bit more developed than you'd want from a hunting standpoint. So it's getting too tall to see deer in it well. Excellent cover, still high forage availability, like this blackberry that keeps hooking me right here. <laughs> so still great, but it needs to be burned again. This stand here that we burned two years ago that one is ideal because it's high forage availability and now the vegetation is tall enough that deer feel safe in it. But when we get elevated, we can still see the deer in it, which uh, you can see on this video here. So <clears throat> very important. We had about 20 or 22 acres right here that we're treating as one stand from a timber harvest standpoint, but uh, we've broken it up even further with a nice little a disc line right here. It's pretty easy to do if you have a small tractor with a disc. We've broken it further up into smaller blocks to really make the stand heterogeneous in terms of the cover and food it's providing. And if we did, the, if we had a little bit larger stand, we could break it up more and have more years that we apply fire in. You can imagine how we could manage to always have the ideal height of cover to hunt on uh, and also have some other good uh, resources right there in one spot. So Marcus, tell us about, uh, we, we see now what you were able to develop mm -hmm. with combination of sunlight, fire, and time. Yep. Uh, we have these really developed understories here. What about the proof? We always say we show bar graphs and give presentations. Mm -hmm. We write articles. This is what the deer yep. are supposed to do. Yep. But you actually documented what the deer did sure. right where we're standing. Yeah, I, I think that's important and that's something that's really missing from uh, the research that we do. Uh, you know, over the years, it's gotten more and more cheap to follow animal use of our treatments. And at this scale, you, you know, you think about radio tagging a deer. Well, that's a really good way to get an understanding of what that deer is doing on the landscape. But 
this is too small of a scale really to really see how that deer is using it. So we took a different approach where we just took a regular old trail camera. In fact, we took um, almost a hundred of them. And what we did in this property, this you know, 500 acres, every five acres, we have a tree that has a camera on it that's stationary. And basically we monitor deer use or turkey use or, or whatever and uh, tie that back to the specific vegetation characteristics that we've generated in these stands. And uh, the proof's in the pudding. This stand right here is the center of, mm -hmm. the, of the property and the animal's use. So we really have attracted them to this treatment where we've thinned it and retained this burning. You know, the, the animals really respond to that and they're really easy to see. And, and it's a Even combination. they, they are. At least what we think, it, it's a combination of food and cover. Absolutely, it's, yeah. The, the, when we start, you know, running our fancy models, basically what, what it shows us is that deer are making choices at this scale. So where are they going to forage at? And, you know, our couple of hundred acres, they're making that choice based on where is it safe to be first? And then second to that, where is it also good to eat? So if you can combine those two things and at the same time make them easy to see, but they don't know that they are, then you have used habitat, managed, habitat management to really improve your hunting and deer herd health. Well, hey, Marcus, uh, thanks for the video and thanks for the research you've mm -hmm. done out here. And you and I recorded along with Steve. Yeah. Uh, we recorded a podcast a few days ago, so we'll make sure this podcast episode goes with this video so people can yeah. tune in and learn more. Yep. I think that's great. We talk about it in much more detail, what we actually do on this property. But again, we wanted to show you what that looks like.